So today is uh, June 19, 2014. So for the yogis who make great effort in the, the mindfulness development, Sierra would like to expound the uh, metta, love and kindness. Uh, regarding the, the Dhamma talk given by the Buddha to 500 monks. Uh, so the Dhamma discourse today is titled, uh, as mentioned yesterday, the Medha, Love and Kindness, the Human Way Power. So for a meditator who practice intensively, so metta is uh, something necessary, like a uh, bodyguard. And this uh, protective chanting too. So metta is also kind of the chanting. So when our mind during the intensivity, sometimes unstable, agitated, and then we should develop metta, uh, to individual <coughs> persons or all living beings, happiness and uh, peacefulness. And uh, due to metta, our mind, after some time, we become calm and uh, peaceful and uh, tranquil, enough to focus on the meditative object, on the, on to develop the mindfulness. So through the tranquility of mind, stable mind, so we can easily develop concentration and a progressive vipassana insight. So for these reasons, for, for these benefits, so the Buddha expounded metta as a protection. And uh, so here is a uh, motto. By developing metta, we can, uh, we can successfully deal with the people around. And uh, by developing mindfulness, we can master ourselves. So by developing metta, we can master others, or we can win others. And uh, by developing mindfulness, we can win ourselves. So that's a kind of motto. Uh, the, in the daily life, in social life. And the middha, love and kindness, is also very important. So to successful socialization or relationship, or middha is something really important. So that here in this story, the 500 monks, they are developing mindfulness in the forest. They are doing something wholesome and uh, uh, skillful, but uh, they encountered the hardship and uh, problem in the forest. So regarding metta, how to develop metta, Masi Siaro uh, expounded in his book, Brahma Vihara. So today Siaro would like to explain uh, the how to how beneficial the metta is. So regarding the benefits of metta, how beneficial metta is mentioned in the Pali text called the Nidana Sanyoda, the Aukha Sota. So on one occasion, the Buddha was residing in the Sawati city Jedawana Monastery. The Buddha said to the monk, suppose for example there are, uh, you may offer, uh, you may feed uh, many people, maybe 100 people, cooking the rice in hundreds of the rice cooker. And a few people in the morning, every morning, or the and daytime, lunch, on the evening when the sun set, and dinner. So in this way, people can accumulate 
great amount of merit. However, someone he developed meta in the morning. Just briefly, just uh, just briefly as a single squeeze of the corn teats for milk in the morning. Or the, in the afternoon or in the evening or sunset, just three times a day, just briefly as the, uh, a single squeeze or a corn teat for milk. So that, however great the amount of merit or the uh, generosity, this, the acute movement development of the middle we outshine or outweigh. So the general donor, they accumulate the great amount of merit but uh, that amount of media will be outshown or outweighed by the, the media we develop just briefly as the, the squeezing or counted. Regarding this uh, benefit of the, the media, uh, Mahasi Siyaro composed a poem in Bhamis according to this sutra. So Siyaro recited this poem. And that poem is mentioned in the Parma Vihara Sutra, expounded by Mahasi Siyaro. So regarding how beneficial meta development is, here the another uh, sutra called Kula Sutanta. So the Buddha used this simile, or the analogy of a family with the uh, only women, no men. So one family, for example, consists of the women, no men at all. Then such family is um, vulnerable to all kinds of uh, enemy and enmity. They are subject to thief and uh, robbery. Yes. They are not very safe. So in the same way, we develop the mindfulness, but uh, we fail to develop metta. Then we are compared to a family of the only women, no men. So very vulnerable to danger and uh, enmity. So if we don't develop metta at all, and then we are easily threatened by kind of the, the ghost or the spirit or evil spirit and uh, something like this. So that we need protection from such uh, evil spirits and uh, ghosts like a family uh, or the many men and then the, uh, it's a family has uh, many men then uh, no one can dare to approach, to attack. So in the same way, if we develop mindfulness, at the same time we develop metta, and then uh, we are like family, strong family with the men, so no one dare to touch us. So in the same way, if we develop metta uh, repeatedly, and day and night, Maybe we develop up to we attain the uh, jhanic state. And then the meta will be extremely powerful. No evil spirits dare to approach us. So meta is such a powerful protection. That's why the Buddha highly recommended us to develop meta. So in the human world, all human beings are working very hard day and night to accumulate wealth. So actually, we live just uh, for, uh, for a while. 
So one day, definitely, we have to leave all our property or possession behind. So the, whatever we possess, they are just like some of them borrowed from somebody. Because in due course of time, uh, we have to leave everything we have behind uh, when we uh, die. So there is uh, nothing uh, to be said, to be considered as our own, except the, our Dharma. So Dharma is uh, usually our own. The Dharma we develop is our own. So this always accompany us. It always make us happy and uh, prosperous anywhere, anytime, in any life. Uh, we were, we, we, we will be. So the Dharma is uh, our own, our own uh, possession, our own property. So what we, the wealth we are looking for, we accumulate, are uh, actually like a poison. If we are really attached to, to those, to, to the, our property and uh, belongings, uh, because of the attachment, we will definitely suffer uh, in this very life and uh, in the lives to come. So the, the wealth we have accumulated is a kind of poison. And um, attachment to life is also a kind of the poison. Attachment to life make us uh, kill us repeatedly. So the more rebirth we have, the more we, uh, the more death we encounter. So anyway, death is uh, an unavoidable destiny. One day we all going to die, leaving everything behind. So the Satipatthana meditation. The development of mindfulness uh, help us to overcome the or to reduce the amount of the mental defilements like the loba, dosa. Uh, they are kind of mental poison. The attachment and the the greed and the selfishness, hatred. They are exactly mental poison and. Uh, mental defilements. So by developing metta, by being mindful of our mind and body, um, we develop the inside knowledge, and at the same time, we reduce the, the mental poison, loba, dosa, and so on. So in this way, mindfulness and loving kindness uh, the two together help us to overcome all kinds of the poison like the disaster and the misfortune. So that's why we need to develop two phenomena uh, together, sati, mindfulness, and metta, loving kindness. So by developing mindfulness continuously and effectively, and uh, occasionally developing metta, loving kindness, we can live a peaceful and a happy life. Happy life. So, if we want to be live a happy and a peaceful life, we have we need to develop mindfulness and uh, metta, loving kindness. So, the mindfulness must be developed uh, any time, any time, anywhere. Uh, whether we are going or sitting or standing or eating or we should be mindful all the time. And so in this way, we develop mindfulness and uh, occasional development of metta and uh, we can live a peaceful and a happy life. So to develop metta and loving kindness successfully, uh, we need to develop the kanti, the forbearance, and forgiveness. 
if we don't have candy or forbearance or patience, we angry and we don't uh, forgive. And then it will be very, very difficult to develop metta, love and kindness. Here in this regard, Sierra recite Bami, Bami's poem. Uh, only when we can develop the forbearance and patience, uh, metta can be developed successfully. So when we develop the mindfulness, uh, it's quite important to renounce worldly life. Uh, we have to come to the center, uh, leaving our business and family behind. So without renunciation, it will be difficult to develop mindfulness successfully. So when we practice meditation, seclusion, uh, it's also very important. Uh, privacy is uh, very important. So we should be alone mentally when we practice uh, meditation, when we develop mindfulness without associating other people with other people. So that we can develop the mental power, way power, and occasionally we develop metta. So as mentioned earlier, metta is necessary for successful the social life, and uh, mindfulness is, uh, uh, can be developed only with the seclusion and uh, mental privacy. So by protecting ourselves, mindfulness, through the mindfulness and metta, we spontaneously protect other two from danger and disaster. So as mentioned earlier, the we can win ourselves by developing mindfulness. And uh, we can win others by developing metta, love and kindness. So for sure, by developing mindfulness and uh, metta, we can live happy and uh, peaceful life. So this Metta Sutra is uh, expounded by the Buddha in the Jedawana Monastery in Sawati city to the monks who were making great effort in the development of Vipassana, mindfulness. So about 500 monks they learned how to develop mindfulness uh, from the Buddha, how to develop mindfulness until uh, the full enlightenment. They learned detail from the Buddha, and then uh, they left for a secluded place in the forest, 500 Yujana away from the Sawati city. So these monks, they are uh, on the way to the forest, and uh, with the re full requisites or the monk or monastic requisites like the ambo and a robe. So they are very uh, admiring and uh, very impressive manner. So the people in the village, they, very, they were very impressed by the men and uh, appearance of the monks. So they invited the monks and uh, offer uh, food to them. And then they ask, whenever sir, where are you going? Then the monks answer, oh, we are going uh, somewhere secluded place, a suitable place uh, to practice meditation. Then the villagers, they requested the monks to, to practice the forest nearby in their village. So they mentioned if the monks stayed in the nearby forest, they, will, they would get a good opportunity to take precepts, five precepts, and then to listen, Dhamma talk, and to practice with the monks. So, they humbly requested the monks to stay 
and brightens the forest nearby. And also they pledged they, will, they would uh, provide all the monks with the four requisites uh, when they, uh, they were practicing in the forest nearby. So in the forest, so they practice under the trees. So the, the guardian deva in the trees, tree guardian deva or spirits, so they could not stay in their trees. So they are uh, on the ground, uh, wandering around here and there. So they, the guardian deva or spirits, they expected the monk to leave uh, within a few days. But actually, monks are practicing there uh, day and night. They won't lead. They won't leave uh, very soon. So these uh, spirits and uh, three guardian deva, they quite upset. Uh, if the monks stayed, uh, for the whole rain retreat, and it will be very difficult for them to to live their life uh, on the ground on the earth. They won't have a chance to. They will lose a chance to go back to their home in their own trees. So they are very disappointed and um, they very uh, kind of the upset and angry. So they prepared to chase the monk away. So in this way, they spend uh, a month and a half. So the the spirit deva, uh, three guardian deva, so upset. They cannot stay in the trees and in, in, in above of the monks because of the the power or the virtue practiced by the monk. So that's why these three guardian spirits, they upset, and uh, so they discussed how to drive the monks away, out. So nighttime, or monks are practicing meditation, walking alone here and there, and daytime, Sit in meditation alone here and there. So the the three guardian devas they took advantage to scare the monks. They show the the kind of the uh, body, dead body with the no head, and uh, and uh, sometimes very uh, scary voice and at some time very form, small. So the monk saw the dead body with the no head in panic, and um, they could not even uh, sleep at night. In this way, monk got a lot of sleepless nights. So when the monk met each other, saw each other, and then they, they saw each other uh, afflicted with the illness, like the, the coffin or the cold, or the, the monks, all the monks look very weak and very thin, lose a lot of, lost a lot of weight. So they asked each other, what happened to you, my friend? You, you very, look very thin. And, uh, you are coughing, or oh, me too. And what's the problem? So they share their experience with others. Oh, today, I, uh, uh, last night, I saw a dead body with a no head. Oh, I was so scared, I could not sleep. Uh, another monk said, oh, I'm, I practice anabana meditation on oh, any out breath. I smell a very foul and a filthy smell. I got. I was so scared. I could not practice. Uh, something like this. They share their uh, panic experience with one another. So finally, they unanimously decided. 
Oh, this place is no very suitable place for us to practice intensively. So we'd better go back to the Buddha and uh, get advice. So in this way, they went back to the Savati city to see the Buddha. So when they arrived to the Buddha, so the, the Buddha asked them, why you came back during the, the Vasa, the rain retreat? And then they replied to the Buddha, all oh, these blessed one, the venerable son, we practice meditation intensively. We keep our virtue, uh, our precepts pure. We practice under the tree and uh, intensively. But there are many uh, superiors. They don't like us. Uh, they hate us. They show us, they scare us. Uh, and they show very, we saw a very scary sight and uh, hear very scary song and uh, phone smell. So we came back uh, to you for advice. Then the Buddha said, Oh, my disciple, my dear disciple, you went there as a guest without gift. Is you sure you supposed to take gift to the uh, to the host? So without taking giving gift to go to visit somewhere, so they don't like you, so they scare you. So the Buddha advised them to go back to the forest, to that same forest. So they are very scared to go back to Saint Forest. Then the Buddha said, don't worry, I give you the powerful weapon. What type of weapon, sir? Oh, this is a meta. So the Buddha then taught them how to develop meta, uh, meta sutra. So how to recite meta sutra and uh, how to develop the loving kindness. So whatever we do, wherever we are, whether we are standing or sitting, going or lying down, or whether in we are doing something uh, worldly or spiritual, the middle is always helpful. So when we go somewhere, we should send our love to all living beings there. So the monks, when we, they are going to the forest, so they are advised to send a middle to the living beings in the forest they are going to. And then when we come, when we are going to the center, uh, we should send our love and loving kindness to all living beings in the center we are going to. So Sierra said when he, uh, about to come to the TMC, Trakata Meditation Center. He sent Meta to all people and living beings in the Trakata Center to be happy and happy, uh, peaceful. So Sierra developed Meta or sent Meta in advance ahead of his journey. So wherever we go, we should send our love and wish to all living beings uh, there, uh, all living beings, the place we are going to. So as advised by the Buddha, as taught by the Buddha, all the monks, they sent metta to the living beings in the forest, and before they get into the forest. And uh, when they get into the forest, also they sent metta and, uh, to individual living beings or all living beings in general, Orisa Mita or Anorisa Mita. So the, the, the spirits, the guardian, three guardian spirits, they were touched by the Mita, a loving kindness sent by the monks. So they, when they saw the monks coming in distance, 
they came down from the tree and uh, they say, oh, welcome back. So we are looking forward to seeing you. Oh, you come very late. Uh, don't worry, and uh, we will take care of you, anything you need. You know, let us know we will take care of you, something like this. The, uh, all the monks are warmly welcome back to the forest. They no longer make any uh, problem or difficulty to the monks. So due to the middle, so the, the separated devas and the monks, they mutually help each other, mutually help us help each other, and then they practice meditation successfully. So Sarah, we continue this uh, story tomorrow. So today, time is up. For, that's for for today.